Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. We are uh, just past the Rule 5 draft, uh, getting ready for the calendar to turn over to 2031. The Royals have had a uh, productive free agency period so far. You can see we signed Nicky Lopez um, to be our shortstop for the next three years. Uh, filling a hole that was uh, caused by his departure a year ago. And then we also picked up Aaron Nola to hopefully take over as the ace of our staff following the departure of longtime ace Spencer Bauer. So as we think about our roster, we still have close to $19 million that we can spend on free agents. Uh, the issue is that there's not a ton of great talent out there anymore. Um, can see the only three and a half star players are a couple of relievers and our uh, one year shortstop from last season, Tim Anderson. Thinking about our roster, we've got a couple holes that we'd potentially like to improve. Um, we'd always love to add another pitcher, so that's an option. And then thinking about our everyday lineup, um, right now, we are going to potentially, probably easier to see if I look at our 40-man roster since not everyone is on the 26-man uh, yet, but um, we've got Bobby Witt Jr. back to play third, which is big. We've got Nicky Lopez to play short, who is very solid defensively, so that's good. First and second base are both kind of question marks for us. Um, second base, we've got Ricardo Cabrera, and then we will likely have Victor Rosa up at the major league level. Um, both look like they're competent-ish major league hitters. Um, in the case of Cabrera, particularly a pretty solid uh, utility infielder. But likely one or both of them will be starting games for us at second base this coming season. And then at first base, uh, Juan Palomares uh, just turned 24 years old yesterday. Looks like he can be a pretty good contact hitter, uh, great clubhouse presence, great personality, and a solid defensive first baseman, or I guess more to say a respectable defensive first baseman, but he is 6'5", so he's got the great range. Doesn't look like he's ever going to be a great power hitter, but certainly looks like he could be average-ish there. And he has, over the last three, the last two seasons, three stops, um, been a pretty productive minor league hitter, hitting 297 in high A ball in 2029, and then 298 in double A and 293 in triple A this past year. So it looks like he could be a decent contact hitter for us. Um, obviously would probably prefer to have a little more of a home run bat at first base. Aiden Harris is another option there, but again, profiles is a very average-ish major league hitter, although again, at 6'5", profiles is a, a solid defensive um, first baseman, but he was in double A this last year where he hit 296 with 18 home runs. Um, in 233 at-bats, he started the year in high A ball where he only hit 253, but hit 18 homers there also. So a very productive year for Harris. So I feel like there are young players that we can mix and match at second and first base. If there was a great option out there in free agency or trade, we might look to add somebody. But so far, we haven't uh, found that person yet. So then the question is... Um, when we look at the pitchers, as I mentioned, a couple of um, relievers are kind of the best players that are out there. But I like our team right now. I don't love it, but I don't necessarily want to overpay just to bring in somebody. So then what do we do with this money that we have? Um, we could look for a potential option in trade. We could add more money to our scouting and or development budgets. And we could also potentially um, reignite conversations with Alex Vasquez about signing a long-term extension. Um, although his price has gone up, uh, he's looking for over $22 million a year for 10 years, and he wants that player opt-out after five years when his um, 
free agency years would begin. So uh, unless we can buy out some of those free agency years, there's really no point in us kind of pursuing a uh, longer term with deal with him yet. Now, certainly coming off of a uh, season where he won the Silver Slugger, was an all-star, and also won Rookie of the Year, it seems unlikely that his price is going to go down significantly. Um, you know, that being said, though, He's looking for over $22 million a year average. Um, certainly bigger numbers for these next few years than the major league minimum that he's due this season. And then even heading into the arbitration years, he's not going to be making 18, 24, and close to $30 million. So um, he's just not, I'd say, being very reasonable right now with what he's looking at. So I don't know that that's the answer. So... I think first thing we probably want to do is increase our scouting and development budgets back to the level or in exceeding the level that we had them at a few years ago. So I'm going to look to put those up to 22 and $33 million, which will, um, if I had entered the $22 million properly, um, he takes us down to a little less than 14 million dollars for free agents um but feel good that we'll have um you know more fulsome scouting and, and development budgets um wanted to get into a couple of um comments and feedback we've gotten some from some some viewers on what to potentially do um have been some suggestions to try to trade away maxime de la cruz uh, scouting discovery we had the number one prospect in baseball now even though he was a scouting discovery just five five months ago um looks like he potentially has a good personality um doesn't seem like he's really a shortstop at the major league level you know he could kind of be a competent ish second or third baseman he's six two we could play him at first if we had to and he looks like he could also be a corner outfielder. So I'm um, going to have a lot of defensive versatility, but not um, not going to be great anywhere defensively. But certainly looks like he could develop into a big-time bat. Um, have gotten some suggestions to try to deal him while he's the number one prospect in baseball, which I get. Um, obviously, since he's only at our international complex right now, we don't have the option to trade him. Um and I just um, don't love the idea of bringing up a 16-year-old to rookie ball. Um, so we would have the option to potentially move him in a deal. Um, so I think I'm going to probably hold on to him for at least a year at this point. Hopefully he will continue to develop. Um, and he'll still have some value if we do decide to, to trade him and move on from him. Uh, other feedback that we've gotten kind of in the comments is to think about whether we can potentially move a Sal Frelick or a Junior Marin or a Fabricio Valera to first base um, to maybe cover for Palomares and get us an extra bat in the lineup. Um, that is definitely an option. You know, Alex Vasquez was primarily a DH this past year. Um, he is definitely not a very good defensive first baseman feel like we could put him in left field or right field though and wouldn't be optimal with that below average range um but is acceptable as far as his error and his arm so feel like he could potentially become an outfielder for us if um he doesn't end up at dh uh junior marin just not gonna work out at first base um you see horrible ratings here he is six two but think he has to remain a corner outfielder or a DH for us. Um, Sal Frelick defensively looks like he could certainly be competent at first base for us. The issue is he's only 5'9", so he's not going to have the reach um, to kind of make a lot of plays that we would prefer with a bigger player, so that's not optimal. And then Fabricio Valera, um, again, just awful ratings in the infield. 6'2", you know, could play it in terms of size, but the 20 range is just uh, just disastrous, even though it's not a position that's um, incredibly important defensively. So um, from that perspective, you know, sadly, I think Alex Vasquez, who's 6'3", and has not as good ratings as Frelick, but better defensive ratings than Marin or Valera 
is is probably a decent option at first base but really you know it's going to be mix and match in the corner outfield spots among those guys obviously Vasquez will be in the lineup every day somewhere and then we'll have to decide whether Juan Palomares or Aiden Harris or somebody else potentially becomes our first baseman so I don't think we got a big free agent move or another big free agent move in us Uh, I think the question is, as we get closer to the season, is there someone that we can potentially add, perhaps through um, trade, who would be, you know, kind of on an expiring contract and maybe a talented player who could help make our team better for next year? And we may have a trade here. Um, Josh Hader, excellent closer, is on the trade block from the Cardinals. He's in the last year of his contract, making $11.6 million. Um, Obviously, you can see a perennial all-star, perennial reliever of the year in the National League, Um, and he actually won a World Series back in 2026. So, big-time pitcher. Um, We do potentially have a bit of a hole at closer, and we could use another lefty arm in the bullpen. Um, as we talked about in our last episode, one of our um, big-time lefty relievers, um, Will Bryan, suffered a setback in the injury that kept him out most of the second half of this past season and is out for about another seven months at this point. So he's certainly going to be missing probably about half of next season at least. Um, so we could use a proven closer and we could use a, another left-handed arm in the bullpen. Um, and Hader um, is only a one-year commitment. Um, they're looking for, you know, only about 10 players in our system. They would trade straight up for him. Um, I think Luis Banuelos, who was a seventh-round pick of us back in 2027, is to me the... Um, Easiest one to give up. You can see he's a 22-year-old. Um, has only made it to rookie ball, but he was pretty effective there this year uh, at the age of 21, going 6-2 and two with a 2.50 ERA and 11 starts and uh, very good stamina. You can see he averaged almost eight innings a start, which is absolutely insane. Um, concern with him is he doesn't have great great work ethic. He only throws in the mid to high 80s, although he is a finesse pitcher, so he can probably get away with that a bit. But the lack of work ethic um, concerns me a bit because he kind of profiles in a best case scenario is an average-ish major league starter. Maybe a little better because he potentially has a really nice slider. Um, And I do like the fact that he's durable. But... We can send him to the Cardinals and get them to keep 40% of Hader's contract, which would take us out of about half of the money that we have left, but still leave us with about close to $7 million to potentially um, do some bargain basement free agent signing over the next couple months as we get closer to the season starting, and then more importantly, give us the opportunity to take on some salary as we get closer to the trade deadline in the 2031 season if we decide that the, the potential holes that we have at first base or second base or, or potentially at the back end of our starting rotation are significant enough that we need to kind of add some talent to improve them. So I'm going to think about this a little more, see if we can potentially, what we'd have to give up, you know, for them to keep 60% of Hater's contract to give us just a little more flexibility. And you can see that there are some options there. Um, actually right here, who's this guy? Carson Hobbs, um, 28-year-old who's playing in double-A ball for us, was an 11th round pick draft in 2025. Um, Two nice pitches with a fastball and a curveball, but he's never, I don't think, going to be productive at the major league level. Um, I'd certainly add him in. Will they take any more money to keep him? Yeah. They'll, take, they'll keep 65% of his contract if we give them a legitimate starting pitching prospect than Luis Banuelos and a uh, extremely marginal starting pitching prospect in Carson Hobbs. Um, but that would still leave us with close to $10 million and really round out the back end of our pitching staff with a uh, 
big time pitcher like Hader who can hopefully close for us, um, give us another lefty arm out of the pen and um, only be a commitment for the rest of this year. So not a long term commitment to an aging player. So I think I'm going to go ahead and complete that trade. Um, I'm guessing that the fans will be excited that we bring on a pretty established and popular player like that. So that is um, some more good news for the team. Yeah, you can see the fans were very excited by that trade. Um, wow, it gave us a very big bump in fan interest. I'm not 100% sure, but I thought we were at 88. Six-point bump in fan interest. That uh, seems to be about as good as it gets. Um, but looking at Hader... Um, yeah, he's extremely popular both nationally and locally. Um, so um, hopefully that'll also help us sign some, sell some more season tickets. Um, we did end up raising our ticket prices modestly, and you can see right now we're tracking to sell just about exactly as many season tickets as we did last year. But hopefully bringing Hater on board may give us a little bit of a boost there. So we've still got about ten million dollars. Um, we've got our scouting and development budgets both back to where we wanted to be. And we've added Nicky Lopez at shortstop. We've added Aaron Nola on a one-year deal to hopefully stabilize the top of our rotation. And now we've added Josh Hader to hopefully stabilize the back end of our bullpen. So um, I feel like we're doing what we need to do um, to be a better team this, uh, to be as, as good a team next year as we were this past season, and hopefully a better team. Obviously, the big move before free agency signed was getting Bobby Witt Jr. locked up for five years before he hit free agency, and then we also re-signed R.J. Dabovich um, to to round out the bullpen. So. Um, it's only December 23rd, but I think at this point the heavy lifting for this offseason is likely done for us. Um, as I mentioned, we've got enough money that when we get to mid to late February, we'll see if there's any bargains out there and uh, decide if there's someone else we might like to add. And uh, Tim Anderson has now moved on. Uh, we've got a big contract. 18 million for a year for two years with the uh, Brewers so um, good for him I mean he had a nice bounce back year with us after missing an entire season he hit 290 12 homers solid defensive shortstop on that uh, I think we paid him 10 or 11 million dollars last year on a one-year prove-it deal so good for him getting two years and over 36 million um, but the fans were not pleased by that, and uh, you know we're still better off than we were before we signed Hader, which is positive, but took a little hit to uh, fan interest with the loss of Mr. Anderson at shortstop. But as I think about it, you know he's going to make 18.2 million this coming year, and has a vesting option. You know we replaced him with our former shortstop Nicky Lopez, who we signed to an average of five million a year over three years and we've got a team option for his final season and although Nicky Lopez is not as good defensively he's still a better defensive um, shortstop than Anderson and has that great personality so I feel a lot better playing Nicky Lopez in his mid to late 30s 15 million dollars potentially over three years than I would um paying an even older Tim Anderson over 18 million dollars for one year so Talking my book a little, maybe trying to justify not bringing back Anderson, but um, I like the move that we've made just in terms of the uh, financial aspects of it. And given that we do have a hole um, at second base and can always use a batter, our uh, assistant GM, our actual non-existent assistant GM, suggesting we um, try to sign Ruben Pabon or try to trade for Ruben Pabon from the Rangers and certainly would love to have a player like him. Um, can see hit 294 last year, um, 37 doubles, 13 homers, 120 OPS+. Plus. Uh, after a 112 OPS plus in the year before in his first um, extended major league action. Looks like a solid defensive second baseman. Um, might 
in a perfect world want the range to be a little higher, but uh, excellent at turning the double play, doesn't make a lot of errors, and has a more than acceptable arm for second base, and certainly a plus bat. But he's a 25-year-old player making the major league minimum who was the second overall pick three years ago. So I'm going to have to imagine that the asking price for him is probably going to be something we can't even meet yeah they we have no player that makes the deal work which is interesting because i would not trade alex vasquez for him straight up but even if we offer alex vasquez to him um they say that we're wasting their time and there's not even another player that we could add so um sometimes the uh more difficult trade setting makes um makes unrealistic things happen as good as Ruben Pabon looks and as good as he is um, potentially defensively, um, you know, he's almost 26 years old. I have a hard time that um, even though Alex Vasquez has his deficiencies defensively, he just turned 24 years old and looks like he could be a uh, incredible bat for the foreseeable future just won the rookie of the year in the silver slugger as i mentioned while leading the league in doubles ribbies batting average slugging percentage ops and wrc plus so the fact that they wouldn't even make that trade straight up and we don't have anyone else to add in who can make that deal work um just shows how um I guess unrealistic the AI can be about trading when um, you know you're playing with some of the more difficult settings. But it is what it is. I didn't think that um, we'd end up making a trade for Pabone because I thought they would look be looking for too much. But they're um, you know just looking for ridiculously too much as far as I'm concerned. If we add in the young catching prospect Angelo Bolden, uh, and then we'd have to add in the great young center fielder. Angelo Velasquez. So we basically add the number four prospect in baseball coming off a rookie of the year season, um, a potentially big time center fielder um, who's only 22 years old, and then a potential future starting catcher who's only going to be 24 years old next season, former first round draft choice. And uh, we can get Ruben Pabon for those three. So Clearly, that is not something that we are going to proceed with. And we've simmed ahead a few more weeks. Um, we're just about at the start of the preseason, beginning tomorrow. I'm going to keep the scouting budget at $22 million, development budget at $3 million. Uh, but we did have to throw a couple more dollars into the draft budget. We were at $8 million, so we'll put it up to $10 million, which is pretty close to the $10.5 million slot amounts that we are expecting to pay um so that has us um with about eight million dollars left for free agents so again we may do a little bit of bargain basement shopping as we um get closer to spring training uh, but definitely want to um keep some money so that if we need to take on some salary as we get into the season um we've got the opportunity to do that if um some of the holes that we think may exist on the roster, like first base or third base, get worse, or um, injuries or ineffectiveness um, lead us to develop some other holes on the roster that we're not even thinking about right now. And we've simmed ahead into February, and right now I'm doing something that I do um, most seasons. Um, we are definitely short on pitchers for our minor league system at this point. So I am just looking for um, kind of proven pitchers with good personalities, good leadership, good work ethic. Um, you can see Jack Masloff here, good leader, good intelligence, popular in the clubhouse. Um, he um, is looking for a major league contract. So he is among many people that I'm just offering a minor league contract to right now. Um, Ryan Robinson, you can see here, 31-year-old, good leadership, um, mostly relievers, um, really just organizational depth potentially, and um, most of these guys are going to be offended by the minor league contracts that I'm offering to them. I can see Mike Soraka, who we did this with a couple of years ago, and then we ended up uh, trading him away. Um, don't think he would be a good one to bring back because some of these guys um, 
get pretty sour when um, they don't get called up to the majors and, um, you know, kind of let them go at the end of the season when they've become a distraction in the clubhouse. But uh, Darius Valdez here, 35-year-old, good work ethic, um, certainly not a major league quality pitcher at this point. You can see he's been in the minors the last few years, hasn't been above double A, um, but we'll offer him a minor league contract. Um, you know, it's possible that some of these players will end up contributing at the major league level, but you can see we've got a list of about 10 pitchers now, kind of two and a half, three star pitchers that we've offered minor league contracts to. Uh, if we're lucky, maybe two or three of these guys will actually sign with us and give us a little more organizational depth. Um, but always looking to kind of find guys with good personalities to have in the minors and, um, you know, potentially. Uh, increase the um quality of our or overall organization and uh, hopefully guarantee that we win a few more games in the minors and um also kind of set a good example and be good role models to some of the younger players around them and hopefully have them develop some of the good personality traits that these players have also All right, we've simmed ahead another couple weeks, and we have added a few um, relievers and starting pitchers, generally kind of uh, 4A kind of guys or even lower kind of guys, but they do give us some you know, good work ethic, good leadership, um, good personalities, and also you know, more than competent for kind of our high A, double A kind of teams to ensure that we've got some quality uh, pitchers on those teams to round out our pitching staff in addition to the younger prospects. So brought on several players like that and now just taking a look broadly at what's available in free agency here on Monday, February 17th. Um, we're just three days away from the start of spring training. Uh, the most interesting position player out there is probably Jasmine Diaz, um, going to turn 28 shortly. Profiles is a above average bat, at least looking at his batting ratings, his decent speed, good base stealer, good base runner. He's a corner outfielder. Um, kind of the only concern is that he he's barely been an above average major league hitter over the course of his career, despite that batting profile that, you know, is average home run power and kind of above average and everything else. Um, you know, the OSA has him a little lower than our scout, but I would say that our scout is probably more accurate and better than the OSA. So I do like his batting profile. Um, you know, a left-handed hitter. Um, he's not a perfect player. Um, he's looking for eight and a half million dollars, which is more than we even have to spend. And he's looking for that over eight years, which is certainly not an agreement that um, I think we want to make with him. But he would be kind of another nice bat to kind of compete with us for those um, corner outfield spots and um, or DH at bats um, before we um, think more about it. He's only six feet tall, and yeah, he could definitely not be a first baseman for us. But he's kind of the most interesting bat that's still out there. Um, not willing to make him an offer quite yet. I think his price is still a little high, and certainly don't want to lock up him for eight years. But he does seem like if he's on the market a couple weeks from now and looking for even less money, maybe he's the kind of guy that we try to make a uh, offer to for next season. And we've made it to the start of spring training. Uh, one thing that I want to make sure I do this year that I don't remember to do every year is... Um, and we've only got 37 players in spring training because we've only got 37 players on our secondary roster. So I'm um, going to bring up some other prospects. But before we even do that, just want to make sure that we um, go to a six-man rotation for spring training um, to just kind of hopefully uh, get a look at as many players as possible. Um, let's see, Nola, Nola Lager, well, Graceffo, Bosma, and Jacobs are the um, most likely starters with Ricky Benasco also in the mix. 
Josh Hader, not surprisingly, looks like he'll be closer. And then Dabovich and Will Goble, um, two of the other key arms, potentially out of the bullpen. Um, and clearly we need to put some other people up on the roster because the guy who I think um, actually Palomares and Harris are here. be interesting to see what... Um, Nichols looks at the roster with just the guys we have here. He's got Alex Vasquez at first, Marin at right, Melvin Miranda, interesting young prospect. That's uh, surprising to see. Oh, that's because we got him. Uh, we were forced starting him down in single A at a left fielder. He is a guy who was our second round pick uh, f five years ago at this point in 2026. Um, still looks like he could profile as a pretty decent hitter, um, but 22 years old, hit 317 in A ball last year. But um, we do not want to be forced starting him and making him our left fielder at the uh, major league level. So we are going to change the game strategy there and then take a look at what Byron Nichols wants the roster to look like now. And uh, it makes a little more sense with Sal Frelick in left, Fabrizio Valera in right, Junior Marin at DH, and Alex Vasquez at first base, uh, Cabrera the potential starter at second, and then looking at lefties, um, Nazir Mulet, um, who was a second round draft pick for us uh, nine seasons ago at this point, 2022, the first year of the sim. Hit only 239 with 11 homers in AAA last year, but potentially um, could be a fifth outfielder for us. Looks like he will get a little bit of playing time against left-handers. Um, Frelick and Valera still in right. Alex Vasquez still potentially at first base. Uh, Cabrera still at second. So... Um, Going to add a few more players, uh, both position players and pitchers, on to this spring training roster, and then uh, hope we can get through spring training without uh, any significant injuries. And we made it to the end of spring training without any significant injuries. As I mentioned, Will Bryan still recovering from that fractured elbow. He's got another four months of injury time, so uh, he is on the 60-day IL uh, Ricky Venasco um, just had a mild abdominal strain, minimal impact for four days. We've still got three days till the start of the regular season, so that's not a big concern. And then Nazir Muley, um, who is questionable to make the roster um, to begin with, has a mild hip strain, going to impact him for a couple of days. So all in all, the... Um, Royals are pretty healthy here as we um, have gotten to the end of spring training. So um, pleased with that. Um, certainly was not a uh, incredible spring training for the Royals with a 13 and 13 record. But uh, the goal is not really to win the games in spring training. The goal is to win them in the regular season and the postseason. So uh, we kept the team healthy. Hopefully have everyone in good shape and are getting ready for the uh, season to start. Um, take a look at a uh, run of the preseason predictions with uh, the 44 men still on our spring training roster and you can see uh, this projection has us for 90 and 72 uh, so we would be seven games behind the White Sox in the AL Central uh, but we would still be a wild card team and uh, we would have the best record of any of the wild card teams so we would actually be hosting a wild card series so um Similar to uh, where we ended up last season, only we were hosting a wild card series as AL Central champs rather than as a wild card team. Um, but obviously, a lot of um, ways for that sim to go differently. You can see in this uh, sim, Bobby Witt Jr. looks like he's going to have a very solid season, but Alex Vasquez not so much. And then, uh, who sixteen and three with a two point four eight ERA from Aaron Nola, hundred and eighty five innings over thirty four starts. Whew, we would take that in a second for the uh, the thirty seven year old who's fragile could put up a season like that for us. But um, maybe hoping for a bit much there. But good to see that um, you know we certainly should still be in the mix for a playoff spot at the very least this season. And you can see we've only got 4.3 million to spend on free agents now. Um, we haven't 
signed anybody else? Oh, that's because we have so many players on the Major League roster, I think, right now, with the 44 guys in spring training. So that at number should go up a bit. Jasmine Diaz is still out there. Um, only looking for $6 million a year now. Oh, actually, he's looking for $9 million for one year. The Yankees, he claims the Yankees have made him a big offer. So we may not be able to bring him on board. But we are going to um, right now focus on our cuts to get this bloated 44-man spring training roster down to the uh, 26 players that we're going to look to break camp and head from Arizona to Kansas City with. Um, so we've got a lot of decisions to make. Um, and then when we see that that roster looks like, um, then we'll also spend some time figuring out uh, if there are any uh, free agents um, we want to potentially make an offer to to kind of round out that roster. Some interesting players around at this point. Randy Rosarena, um, certainly not the uh, player he is, uh, or the player he was 10 years earlier, but a good personality, um, but kind of just an average-ish bat at best, which you can see by the OPS pluses and WRC pluses he's put up over the course of his career. Actually, he's been a bit below average as a offensive player. But Chris Bryant, Seth Brown, uh, Jose Barrero, Devin Williams, Sean Murphy, Josh Lowe, some uh, some interesting and reasonably prominent names still available as free agents in their mid to late 30s here at the end of spring training. So there may be something for us to do to kind of round out the back end of the roster after we uh, do our initial work in terms of getting it down to 26 men. We're getting down to the tough decisions with the final cuts. Uh, you can see we've got 14 batters on the team. Uh, and it's really down to two players for the final cut. Um, we only have three players who aren't in the starting lineup by um, manager Byron Nichols um, against either lefties or righties. And those are Angelo Bolden, who's our backup catcher, a uh, 23-year-old who we think could potentially become a starting catcher for us down the line. So he's obviously going to make the team as the backup to MJ Melendez. Uh, question is whether we want to keep up the second baseman Victor Rosa who um, you know is kind of a utility infielder but really only can play first or second um, just doesn't have the arm or just doesn't have the arm to play third base and really doesn't have the arm or the range or the turn double play that you'd want in a shortstop um, profiles is a perhaps slightly below average major league hitter hit 234 in AAA last year so um the other option is Jackson Chorio, 27-year-old. Uh, Profiles is a bit better of an offensive player, uh, more of a corner outfielder, but he can also play first base. Um, he's listed as a shortstop and a center fielder, but he really can't play either of those positions, but does have the um, defensive versatility where, although he hasn't played second base in the past, we could potentially play him at second base or even third base in a pinch if we needed um so i think that chorio is the better bat without a doubt but rosa can play second base right now which i like so i think i am actually going to keep up rosa for the time being and we are going to um, send chorio back down to triple a and see if maybe we can um as i mentioned he can already play left and right he can already play first base but he's got the ratings where we could play him at third if we had to we could play him at second base if we had to um i'm gonna see if he can maybe get a little better at one of those positions for start him as a third baseman for a few weeks down there to give us a little more defensive versatility maybe see if we can force start him at second baseman for a few weeks get him a little more defensive versatility and then ultimately bring him up to replace rosa at some point but neither of them is going to be playing much right now so we are going to um go with the uh, Chorio unfortunately does have to clear waivers but I think he probably will will do that so we're going to wave and DFA him 
Um, hopefully he'll make it through waivers and we can begin our plan to um, make him a little more versatile defensively. But that leaves us with our 13 position players. Um, MJ Melendez starting catcher once again, but being pressured by the 23-year-old Angelo Bolden. We'll see how he can hit. Um, every day, um, first baseman slash DH is Alex Vasquez, who's going to be playing, actually not DH, he's going to be playing first base against uh, righties, and then he's going to be in right field against lefties when Juan Palomares, the youngster that we talked about, is going to be playing first base against lefties. Um, Fabrizio Valera is going to get the nod in right field against uh, right-handed batters, but he's out of the lineup against lefties. Uh, Ricardo Cabrera is going to be our everyday second baseman. Nicky Lopez, our everyday shortstop. And, of course, Bobby Witt Jr., our everyday third baseman. Uh, Sal Frelick is going to be in left field every day, hopefully. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Valera is in right field against um, righties, which means Junior Marin is our DH against uh, right-handers. Uh, center fielder is hopefully going to be the youngster Angelo Velasquez every day. And in a bit of an upset, you can see Jordan Groshans, a uh, utility infielder, is apparently going to be our DH against uh, left-handed batters. Not sure how long that will last, but um, I guess he is modestly better against hitting against left-handers than he is against righties, but um, we'd think that... Uh, we can hopefully at some point down the line come up with a better option than that. So given that Groshans is our DH um, and we do have guys like uh, Palomares, a youngster playing at first base, and then Fabrizio Valera is a right fielder against uh, right-handed pitching, we do potentially um, have a opportunity to maybe add somebody to the team you can see the uh, money for free agents has gone back up a bit and we still haven't made our last pitching cut but if we could get a jasmine diaz at a uh, reasonable deal i think he would certainly slot into our lineup particularly against right-handed pitchers as a more productive player and you can look at that profile and you would think that he would also even be dh or outfielder against lefties ahead of jordan groshan so i think that that is potentially a deal that we may look to add after we um make the final cut to our pitching staff because we've got 14 pitchers right now you can see the rotation looks like Nola, Lagerwell, Graceffo, Venasco, and Jacobs. So Tyler Bosma, who had been a uh, starter for us the last couple years, looks like he's going to move to the bullpen at least uh, at least at the start of the year, um, which gives us five righties at the top of the rotation. But we do potentially have a lot of lefty arms in the bullpen right now. Bosma is going to make the team. Dabovich is going to make the team. Goebel's going to make the team. Hader's going to make the team. Wiesenberger is going to make the team. Um, you know, we're kind of looking at Mackenzie Gore, Bryce Hubbard, Ben Onishko, and Easton Tumis as our potential uh, cuts. Easton Tumis is a guy who can um, potentially start for us in a pinch. Um, he's also a right-handed arm. We only have at this point Dabovich and Wiesenberger as right-handed arms out of the bullpen. So we're lefty-heavy with the five righties in the rotation. So Tumis is going to make the team as a righty. So it's really just a matter of looking at Gore, Hubbard, and Anishko and deciding who is not going to make the team. And Gore is a pretty proven major league pitcher at this point. Uh, the 32-year-old lefty has been with us um, through his entire major league career. 113 ERA plus, 94 fit minus. Um, still has plus stuff, acceptable movement, not great control can start for us in a pinch, has you know two good pitches and two average pitches, he's going to make the team. So it's a matter of Bryce Hubbard or Ben Onishko. Uh, Bryce Hubbard is a player with one option year left. We have been sending him up and down um, between Omaha and AAA for the past, or between Omaha and Kansas City. Uh, Omaha is the AAA team. Kansas City is the major league team for the past several years. You can see he's typically been a starter down in AAA, and then pitched out of the pen for us at the major league level. But he has been um, 
average pitcher in terms of if fit minus at a 100, but it's put up a 141 ERA plus for us. Um, profiles, although he is a lefty, he's not really any more effective against lefties than he is righties. Um, do like the fact that he's got the option here left, so that makes him a potential candidate to send down. And then Ben Onishko, who was a Rule 5 acquisition for us, um, would be pretty easy to send him back to the Padres if we so desire. He uh, profiles a little differently in that he is more effective against lefties than he is against righties. Uh, you look at the Major League pitching stats over the course of his career, and he's pretty Pretty effective, 115 ERA plus, 79 FIP minus in 154 games over several years with the Rockies, the Reds, and most recently the Padres. But he is making $4.6 million. Um, and I think that's ultimately going to be the reason why we are going to send him back. Um, We are going to go ahead and wave and DFA him. Ooh, actually, we want to make sure that we don't. Uh, we're just going to demote him to AAA. Oh, I demoted the wrong guy to AAA. What am I doing here? Ben Onishko is who I want to demote to AAA. We have to figure out how to send him back to... Oh. We will release him. Yes, that's what we need to do, to release him to send him back to the Padres. Um, so we're not going to have kept him as a Rule 5 player. Now let me um, bring back Mr. Hubbard. We were just kidding that we were sending you down. So now looking at our pitching staff, uh, we've got our 13 Major League pitchers. Uh, you can see the five right-handed starters that we talked about. Uh, definitely we'll see how painful it is for us to be without Spencer Bauer this season. And then out of our bullpen, we've got eight pitchers out of the bullpen, five lefties and three righties at this point. Um, so a little left-hand heavy, but I guess that makes sense when you've only got, you don't have a single southpaw in the rotation. Um, but now the good news about moving on from Mr. Onishko is that now we have $11.9 million for free agents. And I think um, we are going to try to bring on board Mr. Diaz. Um, that is a bat that can definitely help us. Um, he's an acceptable defensive outfielder could play center field in a pinch but hopefully we never come to the point where we need him for that but he can play left and right could play dh but um he is definitely a better bat than some of the bats we have right now and i think that certainly bringing him on board would let us send victor rosa down to the minors and would um almost certainly get jordan groshans out of the starting lineup against uh, lefties and could probably get, um, I'm guessing it would be a Fabrizio Valera or a Junior Marin out of the lineup against righties potentially. But I think that um, I think that bat is tempting and we've got money to spend. So I'm going to see uh, what it would take to sign him to a one-year deal. And he says he's still looking for $9.2 million and that the Yankees have made him an offer. Um, I'm not going to include a no-trade clause. I don't know that we're going to be able to sign him. I was hoping to do like $6 million to him, but um, given that he claims to have an offer for the Yankees, we probably have to be more competitive. We've got the money to sign him if we want, and we still would have money left for another player if we need to take on some salary as we get closer to the trade deadline. He's a solid major league hitter. As, as I talked about earlier, he's only a bit above average in terms of his production over the course of his career at the major league level, but um, he profiles as a bat that could definitely help us out.
I've just spent a little time kind of looking at some of the other top guys who are available. Um, Jose Barrero, former Royal, um, is the epitome of a average hitter when you look at his batting ratings. Um, but he does have the versatility to pay second, third, or short at a competent but not great level, but is, is an almost perfect utility infielder. Um, if we are not able to get Diaz signed and he does go to the Yankees, if Barrero is still available, I would think about bringing him on board and then sending Rosa down. I think Barrero is a better utility infielder than him. But we've got the money, and we are still trying to compete this season. Don't want to make any long-term commitments. So we are going to make an offer to Rosa of $8.5 million dollars. He might be bluffing that he, um, ooh, I don't, yeah, I guess I've already committed to the no trade clause. If I take that back, that might make him angry. No, nope, he's willing to think about the eight and a half million without the no trade clause. So he claims seven offer from the Yankees, said he was looking for 9.2 million with the no trade clause. I've got him to at least listen to an offer for eight and a half million without the no trade clause. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that offer to him, see what happens um, with him down the stretch of the next couple days before the season starts. Um, Corbin Martin, you can see we had made him a minor league deal a while back. He didn't agree to it. He was just um, you know an organizational depth kind of guy. Given that he's still looking for a job, we're going to offer him a minor league contract also. So um, we've broken camp. We are headed north. Uh, the season will be starting in three days. We may have some news on the offers that we've just made to Corbin Martin and Jasmine Diaz. Um, at the start of our next episode, hopefully we'll figure those guys out over the uh couple of days before the season actually starts but uh we will focus on that in our next episode if you've got thoughts on what we did over this second half of the off season would love to hear your thoughts on them did we uh break camp with the right 26 man roster or would you have made other decisions always love to hear what you're thinking um so appreciate uh anyone who's watched this point and appreciate uh appreciate your thoughts on how we're doing Thanks so much, and I hope you have a great day.